Hey there community, I'm here to show you how to make a tetrahedron quartz Schumann scalar emitter. Our first step is to gather the foam which is going to be the base of our emitter. It's going to be the majority of what this is made out of. Now what I used is styrofoam, also known as polystyrene. It comes in these large panels, poly panels. Each one is about this thick. I just wanted to show a quick view of what this is. You're also going to need a uh, foam cutter. This is a hot wire foam factory foam bow, which I would strongly recommend for this. You could also heat up a G-string, not a woman's G-string, but a metal G-string. You see that right there? That's our plug-in. Sorry, I can't have enough hands to adjust the focus. But anyway, we also need a good amount of repti sand, also known as quartz sand. This uh, this quartz sand, got this 25-pound box, very fine grain, pure quartz. Very fine, very small quartz crystals. So anyway, you can get, I don't know, 12 or 25 pounds at a time mostly from pet stores. This one's called Repti Sand Zoomed. It's the corporation, Repti Sand. Cool. So their best friend is going to be 3M Super 77 Spray Adhesive. You'll need a wrap, a uh, roll of Glad Cling Wrap, which is a uh, type of plastic, I believe, to be a dielectric. Here I used Kroger Aluminum Foil. This is good stuff. This is Gorilla Tape. As you can kind of see inside. Ah, and our favorite, the aluminum tape, also known here as foil tape. So this is uh, used in piping insulation to seal insulation on uh, uh, kind of like that silver ducting used for dryers and stuff. You can find it at hardware stores. Just ask for aluminum tape. And I like the stuff without, some of it has writing on it. I like the stuff without writing because I think it looks sharper. Good stuff. This is Liquid Nails Heavy Duty. I can't move the thing inside the shooter gun too easily. So anyway, this is uh, Liquid Nails Heavy Duty Construction Adhesive, which we're going to use to bond the foam walls together. I like it, and it works great. A cool thing also, well, for one, you're going to need a gun, a... Um, some kind of dispenser gun of, I'm not sure what this is called, some kind of strange unit. But anyway, this is what it looks like. And it dispenses those tubes, which you can buy separately. Um, and I keep it good. Once you use it, I keep a nail in the end to prevent air from coming through. You need some kind of marker. This is a Sharpie. Uh, purple, kind of fat tip. And one of these is absolutely essential. Makes it very easy. This is called a right angle something or other. Right angle iron or something. It's like a long, thick, heavy ruler. Most likely available at hardware stores. It's a um, creates 90 degree angles. And it's uh, fairly heavy duty stuff. You also need, you will also need one of these. I printed out a protractor on the computer. I uh, made it the width of the page to make it easy, and then I drew a line at 66 zero degrees. All right, guys, here I have the uh, sheet of polystyrene. As you can see, this came out of the uh, that package here. So here's our first step. We take a sheet of paper with our 60 degree line drawn on it with a magic marker. And we line it up like so down in the corner. And there you go, there's your first line of your triangle. The other one will do one of those. Alright, so we've made our first line. Wonderful. Now, take our same thing, sixteen and a half inches from the corner, and just 
just make a little dot. Now we have our perfect triangle. Wonderful. that I have uh, made four triangles. One, two, three, four. Ready for the tetrahedron. Drawn out on permanent marker. So, let's go to the next step. So we take our cutter, our foam cutter, and we're going to uh, plug it in, heat it up, and cut right on the lines. I also like to use the right angle iron, or whatever it's called, here to uh, be kind of a guide that I'll lay right on the line and then cut the wire right along this edge. And it makes it pretty easy so you can barely mess up. All right, now that we've created our triangles, uh, we're next going to change the edges. As you see, the edges here are flat, and we need them to come in at a, another kind of triangle along this axis. All right, I'll do my best to record this part, but essentially I'm going to be making cuts along the edges, like I just said. So look closely and follow along. Just gonna eyeball it here. Keeping it even and coming in and meeting up ideally and the center. Sometimes this works Good. Sometimes it is not so good, but we try, we eyeball, we do what we can. There you go. Can you see? There's kind of an edge here. Ideally, it'd be a perfect V, but kind of see what I'm going for. Are all four of them. All right, cool. Here's the fun part. Now that we've got our tetrahedrons and they've got their edge to them, as you can see. Next, we're going to use aluminum foil. Um, 
75 square feet per roll, regular stuff. All right, next pair of high vibration purple scissors, sharp. Next we'll need our aluminum tape, as you saw in the beginning of the video. The 3M super adhesive, super 77 adhesive, this stuff is called, made by 3M spray adhesive. We uh, start, we take our first tetrahedron, we're going to cover it in tin foil and uh, we're going to spray adhesive on the foil and put it back on so it tacks onto this. Now be aware that the spray adhesive does eat through the foam to some degree, so don't use it too much and spray onto the foil not to the phone. And uh, here we go. Now I've pushed the sides so you can really make out the shape very well. Alright. So when I lift it off, you can see that in the tinfoil. Flip it over, and we spray onto the foil. Shake well. Hold it up at an angle. There you go. You want a good, pretty even amount. Then we simply flip over and we attach to our pyramid and you feel it's cold to the touch. Very cold. So I'll smooth out, you know, any air pockets or bubbles. And you should end up with something that sticks like this. Now, you want to flip over on the other side. To spray the edges on the other side. There you go. Fold over. And fold over. Now we're starting to see the, the start to take shape. Isn't that space age? Now you're going to have a couple patches uh, like this. So, what next we're going to do, take a piece and we're going to patch it. Then, instead of tearing the aluminum tape, we're going to cut the tape to be more efficient with it. And that way, I found that when you pull foil tape apart, it does not work at all. So here's our smaller strips, and we're going to use it to attach. All right, and um, we're getting closer now. We only have the tip to go. I wanted to also show you that I take my finger and run it along the edge here to really define, help define the edge of the tetrahedron, so the foil contours to that edge.
And here we have it. One completely and purely covered, aluminum covered, conductive tetrahedron. All right, we have now made all of our tetrahedrons covered in aluminum foil. We're ready for the next step. None of these are actually attached. Just wanted to uh, make it look cool. In our next step, we're going to solder the wire onto the surface of the aluminum to the best of our ability. I also have 24 feet of 16 aug primary wire Looks like this comes like this in a package made by Cira Wire. I got this over at the hardware store, uh, such as Home Depot or Lowe's. So we will also be using possibly our high vibration scissors, aluminum foil, and our foil tape. Lay it over. And then we're gonna set it down right on the foil. That's nice and conductive. And then lay the tape down. right on top of it. And set it right in there. And then feed it out. Yes, so. Good tip. And there we have an excellent and awesome conduction from the wire to our emitter. That's going to be essentially what's going to be going through. I'm going to take our energy and allow the electricity to spread over the surface. So I'm going to do a couple more layers of tape.
Okay, the next step is we're going to uh, use more foil to bridge the gap from one wall to the next as we create these walls. So you want to decide which wall goes where and we'll do that next. Right? Uh, I guess. In the context of our next steps, I decided it would be better to lay these particular um, triangles flat and not try and load it up at an angle like this one. Okay, I wanted to also add here on our connectors, so make definite sure that you um, apply some tape on the ends of them and not just the sides as I showed you because I realized as I moved it up the, uh, the foil bridge can pop up with a little bit of air and not be giving good contact. So to have, in the interest of conductivity, we're going to take a little piece and it there across the edge. Okay, we're on to our next super awesome cool step. We have our Repti sand, which is 25 pounds of powdered quartz. All right there, as you can see. And also uh, something resembling a shot glass as a pour, but you can, I'm sure, use anything that's available that's quasi-cup-like. And you'll notice that I've kept this out, and um, I did not make a connection yet in the third dimension. We're going to do that on the outside. And uh, so now we're going to use Super 77 adhesive, spray adhesive, to spray on the inside of this and pour the quartz over, roll it on, and let the quartz powder stick to the inside. Here's our Super 77 adhesive. And um, the trick always with this is not shooting down, but shooting straight and giving it good shakes. So. This may not be easy to see for you guys, but I'm going to spray the best I can. With the middle. Just roll it on. Okay. 
kind of a zigzag motion all over it. I usually just like to do one triangle at a time, just to keep it, keep it nice and uh, you know all in one place. So that's pretty good right there. I'm gonna take it and then you move it around on the inside. And that way you don't use you look quite down below. And so you can see in the middle, the red quartz. All right, we're up to another exciting chapter. So now what we do, that we have our entire uh, tetrahedron here ready to collapse in. It's covered in quartz, as you can kind of tell. Um, we're gonna fold it all in to create our, finally, our three-dimensional shape. And then we're gonna run liquid nails across the, uh, all the sides. So in that sense, we will seal it up from the outside. So here we go. I'm gonna take my nail and pull it out of the tip. That way, the stuff inside is still liquid and hasn't hardened inside the tip. That took me a couple times to learn, but you guys had the benefit of learning that right off the bat. Also, remember that when you have your liquid nails, always, always, always wipe off the excess on the end. Take your screw and place it back inside your nozzle. And that way, uh, it will not, you can just pop it out and use it fresh again and it's not going to harden up inside that tip. All right, so our liquid nails is hardened, and we're ready to add one more element. Well, a few more, actually, but this is going to be another conductive element. What we're going to do is add strips of aluminum foil 
connecting all the axes on the outside as well, just to make sure that no matter what, we're connecting electricity, electrons, energy waves across all possible sides. So we're going to do that right now with our good old handy friend aluminum foil, our foil tape, and our high vibration purple scissors. So let's get to it. All right, and the step is now complete. We have all possible sides are connecting. As you can see here and here, 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 and in so many places. So you can see right there, you can see how those rectangles are connected. Each one's going to have three connections uh, bridging each wall. Now I'm going to add one more step that was never in any of the ones I've made before but could be good. All right you see I'm going to run some tape, foil tape, right along up here just to help um, keep these edges looking good. And maybe help the conductivity, who knows. But now that I've bridged all of these walls, those of you who have uh, metaphysical feelings, energy, if you're a, um, oh, what's the term? An empath, so to speak, who can uh, receive energies, man, this thing feels really hot, really energetic. And uh, this is so far the best one I've done so far for the purpose of you guys. This is very, very conductive right now, and um, we're doing good. So we're going to continue. We're going to run tape along all of these um, parts right here. Of course, tape being our aluminum tape. All right, we're getting close here. So here, as you can see, I've put foil tape along the edges, all the edges of this tetrahedron. Moves very nicely. And uh, all the way up to the wire, which is coming out here at the corner. So our next step is we're going to spray adhesive on the outside, just like the inside, and uh, put quartz sand on the outside. So let's do that. Alright, this brings us into the final round of construction here. It's been a long journey. So here we have our uh, quartz tetrahedron inside and out. Looks like uh, the reflection 
shows a lot more on the edges, but anyway, another cool aesthetic thing. And um, maybe, who knows, uh, it would be cool to insert larger quartz at the tips here, uh, but we won't do that today because I'm not quite sure of how to keep the quartz in there and what would like be around it. Maybe liquid nails, who knows. But for today, we're going to uh, skip that. If you want to make that, please make it and post your own videos. I'd love to see it. <sighs> so, now we've moved out of aluminum and spray and quartz and those messes. So now we're going to move to this outer coating, which we're going to insulate it. And due to this sculpture, I'm sorry, due to this um, graphic right there, you'll see that's, uh, that's why. So here's our totally clear plastic wrap stuff used for preserving food in our culture. And in our culture also, we have packing tape. Clear packing tape. So we're going to wrap the plastic wrap around this and we're going to seal it with packing tape. So here we go. Okay, also, I wanted to say I'm going to put an extra extra layer of tape along the edges, just so as you know, for, you know, added strength so the edges don't tear. So it's just putting this tape along this edge. And if you want, I would uh, put some extra tape up around the wire to make sure that's good. And, to some degree weatherproofed. And uh, just tape down any other parts that seem to be bulging. And um, there we go. There we have our totally completed uh, double double walled double quartz walled tetrahedron scalar emitter with our wire coming out which we'll get to next so I just want to show you this is how we get this far and once you know it it looks just like this one well maybe not that side there we go looks just like this one totally cool all right replicating So now, for the next step, I'm going to set this aside. Now that these parts are identical, I'm going to go to my earlier model and show that I had this wire coming out. And we'll have this wire coming out, as you see. So it comes out of the tetrahedron. Just like the old one. Now what I did is I soldered it to a, a mono wire, like a, uh, a mono headphone jack wire. So it's not stereo, mono. And then I wrapped my uh, 
my solder and black Gorilla tape to help insulate it. So then we pack it along, and that ends like this. So as you can see, it's only got one band, not two for stereo, but just one. And this is going to plug into our CD player. Okay, here, mega important. Just want to let you know, on the mono cable, when you cut it, there's going to be two wires. Um, stereo would probably be four, as I've read, but you want to use the red wire to connect to your tetrahedron, not this copper wire. That's ground. Uh, you want the red wire, so do not let this copper wire ground touch your signal. Signal is going to be what creates the scalar waves. So, a good thing to know. Connect the red to the uh, solder, solder red, strip it, and then solder the metal to your next thing, uh, the tetrahedron. So when you take it out of the computer, label it 7.83 Hertz Schumann Residence or whatever you'd like. Put it, pop it in your CD player. And you've got your tetrahedron to sit. Right wherever you'd like it. And then you take mono cable and insert into CD player. Now you have CD player connected to a tetrahedron. So this is going to start sending out electric pulses via the CD player. And normally, this uh, line would be going electrically pulsed to a pair of headphones, and that would move a magnet in and out and cause the air to move to create sound. Whereas this, we're using the electricity directly to pulse into a fractal shape outwards. And this is known as scalar waves, uh, moving a, or in, um, interacting with a scalar field. Now, if you want to do multiple tetrahedrons, you could buy something that looks like this headphone splitter by Belkin. And what it essentially is, it looks like this. And it's got a stereo 
on one end, and two mono uh, eighth inch TRS on the other end. Great little uh, Y unit splitter. So you plug this in ideally to your stereo output. So this for some contrast. And then now you've got two from your CD player. And then in theory, I thought you could keep Y splitting and Y splitting. I haven't tried that yet, so who knows what will happen. It'll either work or it won't. But uh, so you connect one tetrahedron. There you go. So you got that, and now you got one more open for the next one. And there you go. Now we hit play. And we are emitting scalar waves. Right, and now to show you the next level of this project, when we uh, start to uh, meta geometrize these shapes, we get something like this. I haven't got the third one yet, but you see with these two, both in the shape of the tetrahedron. If I can get it on there, there you go. And uh, so we have these awesome uh, little Y splitters that we're using. And you'll see here's the first one I've split off. And I've checked it with uh, real CDs and headphones to make sure the signal is intact. And it, indeed it is. So we split off from our first Y, follow that to our second Y. First Y second Y. So this, as we follow, is going lost it. that one is going here to this tetrahedron and that one is going to this strange and interesting shape which I can talk about at a later video. But it's essentially a toroid with uh, crystals going around it. And it was originally an art project, and I decided to pulse it with 7.83 hertz. So it's mostly very thick copper and quartz, and I thought you'd appreciate that. So, and our other <coughs> wire is coming around and around and around, and comes to the other tetrahedron. So, here we got a big thing of quartz right here. Good thing of selenite. So as you can imagine, this is quite the thing. So here I present to you the next phase of the tetrahedron emitter. The next two, as you could probably imagine, we'll have another one here, and we'll have another one up here. These are really cool uh, posts I had made out of, I don't even know what they're made out of, but I found them at the hardware store. They're made for sticking into the ground, and these are supposed to be, right here, these are supposed to be <clears throat> a type of reflector, and a quick and easy way to make a large tetrahedron is, if I can, here we go, uh, each of these has neodymium magnets taped on into the ends and they all stick together and then to really seal them got a nice big neo magnet which I aesthetically taped with reflective tape so it would be reflective in pictures and naturally we need an eyeball on the top so there we go I've just got those two up now it's the third one as you can see dropped but these can just slide pop, right into place so with that I very much welcome you to the world of tetrahedrons.